Hello everybody, welcome to the Taggarts um, Minecraft on the Block Technic Pack series and today um, it's actually so it's been a little while I'm trying to remember it's been a, a little bit a couple of days since I recorded I've been doing a lot of work kind of in preparation for this one and other stuff so um, I apologize it's been a, a little longer break at least between recordings probably not quite as much between the uh, the time that you will have seen it but um, a couple of things I want to mention right off the bat. One, um, the audio may be a little quieter this time. I'm going to record and hope that it works out. Um, and if not, I'll, I don't know, we'll see. Because my uh, my wife is actually doing the elliptical machine in the background, and I wasn't sure if it was going to make noise. So I turned the gain down, and I'm up against the mic pretty close. So that was one thing I wanted to uh, to point out. So <laughs> If, if it sounds off, that's why, um, and hopefully you can't hear that and it won't be annoying, but if it is, then you can just skip this video because it's probably going to be pretty uh, uh, pretty dis disjointed anyway. Okay, so a couple things. One, I got a house cat named Housey who really wants to climb a tree. I got another horse that just happened to like, when I before I had doors, he just came down here, so I decided I'd put a horse, uh, put a saddle on him. And actually, speaking of horses, we're going to come back and look at something really cool. But speaking of horses, I think... So I, I must confess that I didn't uh, watch the last video uh, before doing this. And there was enough time between it. So I, I don't think that previously... Well, I, <laughs> I actually I think that all of this is new. I don't think that you guys even saw this. So we'll, we'll look at that a little bit. Or maybe you did. Maybe I had just started... I, mean, I think I had this built, but I hadn't moved everything over yet um so before i get totally distracted let's go look at one thing at a time a uh, couple of cool things so you saw that we got a nightmare but i don't think you saw that we got a black pegasus and the black pegasus's name is nightmare my son alex named the black pegasus just like my son alex named the uh, house cat housey um, we also are going to be getting a cat named Bucky. He wants an orange cat named Bucky. We also have a goat somewhere, or had a goat, named Sleepy. But I think Sleepy got killed somehow. Anyway, so uh, last time we had um, Jessica and Anne, I think, was the, uh, was the unicorn that produced Blaze, who I named Blaze. And that was actually, whoa, that was a total hiccup in the frame rate. Um, Blaze, who I named Blaze and was kind of a lame name, but is a very cool looking horse. And then Nightmare, who is the Black Pegasus. So anyway, we were we were lucky two times in a row, basically. I, You guys saw we failed on our first attempt with the uh, Pegasus, and we got lucky that the Pegasus was still fertile. Then it was still fertile, and we uh, bred it with, with Anne and got Blaze. And then it was still fertile, and we bred it with Blaze and got Nightmare. So now one of them is infertile. I'm not sure which one. So we we should be able to do some some cool breeding. I want to get really the only thing I really have left that I want to get is a pack horse. Once I get a pack horse, I don't really care. So I also got I named I got another unicorn I named it five because I think it was the fifth unicorn that I found. I'm starting to run out of names. I named the black um, horse that's in the you saw in the workshop Shep. Oh, I also wanted to mention, so I've got a couple of things here, some notes. In fact, I might have to pause. Um, anyway, so you, if you put an ac pickaxe in your hand and right-click, you make the uh, name and the health bar go away. That's why those black horses had no name last time, and I was complaining about it. I just didn't know what I was doing. And I kind of knew that. I had heard it somewhere before, but I forgot. Okay, so let's do this. Um... See those? That goat right there would be the perfect. Wow! Whoa! <laughs> nice. I'll finish him off for you. That goat right there would be the perfect sleepy. Let's see. I don't have anything on me. Well, maybe. Let's see. Maybe sleepy will eat this. Nice. That's what sleepy looked like before. So then I can take this and lead sleepy. I believe. Come on, Sleepy. Come on. And I think I need to probably... No, come here. This isn't really very easy. They don't really... This the whole rope thing doesn't do a great job. Can I push you in there? 
without getting attacked by this cat. Nope, guess not. Okay, come on. Come on. Oh, I lost my rope. Okay, come on. You can almost like, I don't know if you can right click and pull them. Come on, come on. No such luck. I don't know how I got the last one in here, honestly. Come on. There you go. Oh, right there. Oh, we're so close. Come here. Come here. They just don't seem to really follow the door that well. They try to get in any place but the door. Anyway, sorry about that. Well, you know what, Sleepy? We'll let you just roam around. Hopefully you'll be here when we get back. Okay. So a couple... Oh, a couple of things. The other thing I wanted to mention is I have this chunk loading block. You know what? I got to pause real quick because I got to be able to see my notes. I didn't set my notes up. and I need to be able to see them so that I can tell you all the people that gave me awesome information. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And hopefully I can read all my notes. Okay. So a couple of people mentioned the chunk loading block. In fact, there was quite a few people and I don't even know who it was. Let's see. Um, I might not have even written down who that was, but yeah. Um, that is that is one thing. A chunk loading block. Okay, so the problem that you're trying to solve with a chunk loading block is exactly the problem that we saw. In fact, let's just go do that. I'm going to show you the, the coolest part when we get back. I probably, if I was smart, I would show you the coolest part right now. But um, I've been working on a very cool setup for my, for my obsidian generator. So um, it's one of those days. Let's, let's ride Nightmare. There we go. And we're going to go out to the oil platform. So what you guys heard me mention and a bunch of people responded to the problem where um, things weren't happening, like my there was no oil being or there was no fuel being produced in my oil rig. Well, that's that's because when chunks aren't loaded, when when blocks aren't loaded and chunks are I don't I don't remember. Chunks are big amounts of blocks there there's some amount of blocks they call it a chunk and so you can see that the chunks the, actually the size that you see loading in right there that's a chunk so those chunk sizes when chunks aren't loaded nothing actually happens so even when this is on and over here and i turned everything off whoops even when it's on nothing is happening when i when the chunk hasn't loaded now a couple of people said that you can actually load the chunks and then um you can go away and they will stay on for the rest of that session. And I believe that to be true. I don't know that for a fact though. Um, but the point being that I would have to come over here at the beginning of every session, every game I wanted to play, wait for this thing to load. And then I would have to, to uh, go back and do whatever I was going to do. And then when I would come back into the game after I had quit, I'd have to come back over here and then these these chunks would have loaded, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these chunk loading blocks. What they do is supposedly force the chunks to load within a certain area around the block. I don't know what it is, but this will suffice for our purposes right now. Force those chunks to load as soon as the game loads. So no matter how far away you are, it's going to load at least that chunk. So let's go ahead and put this down. And then I thought it was like F3. And you could see something to do with chunk loading blocks but I don't know if that's the case it's probably something else anyway server chunk cache oh yeah I don't I don't see anything specific there so anyway um, I'm sure that there is something to do with that um, but we'll see if that works because what I was gonna do is the next time I'll probably actually quit out so you can see that we're producing a little bit but not not much right this second um, I will quit out and come back and see if anything has been produced. I'll check it before I leave, and then I'll quit out and just let the game run for a while and see if it's actually going. I don't know any other way to do it than that. All right, so it's almost dark. Let's uh, let's go back. I've completely abandoned. So I should also mention that my uh, my my quarry blew up again. Um, I've had so much bad luck with that. I think maybe some of that has to do with the chunk loading. So I don't know. But I, I had, I, uh, it, it's like some of the engines run past the amount of time that they have, um, that they have fuel. So the fuel doesn't necessarily stop the engine from running. I've noticed, I'm not sure why that is, but when that happens, like if my, if my water pump does stop running because it runs out of fuel, but the rest of my engines don't, or if one of the other ones doesn't, then it's going to blow up because 
well, because it's not getting any water, and I just let them go because I just trust that it's going to work. I, I put the same amount of fuel in all of them so that it just works, but it doesn't just work. So, um, yeah, so I, I got sick of that, and I'm sick of it just being so far away. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably, if anything, um, I'm probably going to put the put the uh, quarry down below here somewhere. So I was going to build kind of a room. Um, and we'll talk about that real quick today as well. So this is actually just a very simple and small, yeah, you can almost see, I don't know, well, I don't know. Anyway, this is a simple and small um, uh, solar panel tree. So there's only five solar panels. Those right there on the sides, those are actually solar panels. The whole thing is covered. Oh, see, oh man, you guys, you must die. I can't, I just can't let these guys even exist they can't like that see they're just it's it's ridiculous and those guys they do the same thing this is horrible i gotta get lights up out here lights really do help it's just it's bad it's really bad it's a problem i constantly am having to fix stuff all right sorry about that that's my rant um and i don't have enough cobble or anything to even fix this stupid thing all right let's see sorry totally sidetracked so what i was going to say i'm gonna have to come back out here and fix this um what i was going to say is yeah this thing is uh the, it, so that's a great illustration this is exactly why i encase this thing in um in obsidian plates they're actually obsidian covers so um a couple of reasons for that one you can make a really slick and simple design here um, by basically it's so dark you can't see anything but let's see and I don't think I can put anything on these because they're actually plates placed on the outside there you go so you can make a really simple design um, by yeah I see that skeleton over there you can make a really simple design by putting covers that are basically on the outside. So these covers are all on the outside block. They're not on the inside block. There's actually uh, there's glass fiber cable running down through the middle of that. So there's just one piece of glass fiber cable running down through the whole thing, and all five of these are connected to that one right in the middle there. And then they run down through there, and the reason that you can put the cable around the outside, or the reason you can put the covers around the outside is because... Um, the corners will, or, or is because they're, they're, the, the reason you can't put them on the inside, I'm sorry, is because that cable isn't a red power cable. So like, you know how red power um, wire, you can actually just put um, covers around it on the, on the same block. There's got to be a better way to describe this. Um, I don't have any of that stuff with me. Let me, let me show you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to make an attempt to actually make this make sense. Oh, I probably shouldn't use obsidian because I don't really need any more of those. So let's do this. Um, hold on just a second. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. I, I know I lost my concentration there. My wife was trying to help me. She was telling me that my timer wasn't going. She was afraid that I wasn't recording, so she was trying to be helpful and tell me that, um, that I wasn't recording and she didn't want me to go do all this work without recording. So um, that was very sweet. So anyway, let me show you. The, let me show you what I'm talking about. So I can't place this on on the corner. Like I can. So right right here, you can see how it's on the inside of that block right there. I can place it right there, but I can't place it right there here because this takes up a whole block. That um, that torch takes up a whole block. But what I can do is place it right there, right? And then I could place them all around the outside of that. And it would look like I was encasing just that one thing, but I would actually be taking up all of these four blocks around it, right? What would happen then is it would leave those corners and they wouldn't look right because there would be kind of gaps in the corners. The way you get around that is you create redstone. Man, see, there's another one of those things. You create, oh, you got to be kidding me. No. <sighs> It's just too dangerous out here at night, and it's just, it's killing me. See, there's, they're just, they're everywhere. Sorry, this is the worst, most distracted video ever. Okay, anyway, so you guys get the idea. The, the whole point is that I can place them on the outside. The way you get around that, seriously, everybody wants to join the party. 
the way you get around that is you make those those corners there's the like little corner pieces so that's why this looks like it's actually pretty smooth you see there's no corner gaps and i made that on all of it so anyway the, but that's why you can't place a torch on this because it's actually taking up an entire block by doing that I don't know if that makes sense, but if it doesn't, then go check out the red power stuff. It's, it's, it's the, the, so, so the, what they did was they made, and, and it, it's really smart and it helps the whole process. They made red, like red wire, um, the red alloy wire and all the red power stuff. Um, you can actually, you can actually put the block next to it. So if that was red alloy, alloy wire, I could put a cover right there and you can actually cover within the block. And they did that specifically for those purposes, and that's that's kind of what the covers are for, is so that you can you can use a lot less space. In fact, we're going to go. That's a great segue into really what was going to be the point of this entire video, which is I have now got an automatic redstone generator, uh, uh, automatic obsidian generator. Sorry, I'm I'm totally distracted. <laughs> I got thrown off by everything. So let's see. Um, let me show you. Okay, so let me just. Yeah, this is a mess. But let me let me talk you through this. So these are deployers, right? And they only have one piece of redstone in them. My biggest problem right now. You know what we're gonna do? It's worth it for right now. I, I'm totally out of redstone. So this is all of this is kind of. There's a reason I'm going through all this trouble, but all of this is basically because I'm I'm having issues with. Uh, I'm having issues with keeping my materials up. So I'm going to duplicate some redstone here. Um, we're going to throw a couple pieces of this in there, and I can get a fair amount. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you what. It has just not been... I'm going to have to go back and turn all this into stone again. Anyway, it has not been my night so far. All right, uh, let's try this again. So let's put a couple pieces in there. And I should be able to generate some redstone. So we're just going to duplicate the redstone. There's the timer. That don't, that's only 18 minutes, so I just like to keep the timer around. So um, we're going to duplicate this redstone so that I can show you guys. And really, it's funny because I'm duplicating redstone to make... This is, this is the most inefficient way to do this, but I need redstone more than I need obsidian right now. So we're going to turn all this back into obsidian. So actually, this is, this is pretty efficient. I can, this, this would keep me technically in redstone because I can take one piece of redstone to make a piece of obsidian and then I can make more redstone out of it. So let's do that one more time. Let's just get ourselves up to 12 real quick. And then we're going to go over there. So yeah, so I'm, I'm having trouble keeping um, materials and the quarry stuff is just not working out for me, at least not because of the, it, uh, who knows, the chunk loading block. It's probably wasn't quarrying when I was away from it either. So nothing really just seems to be as efficient as it's supposed to be with all of this very cool handy stuff and I, I was trying to make my world a little bigger and I think that was kind of the problem um, so let's do this there we go okay so we got some redstone I'm gonna go show you guys what's going on with this that cat attacks me periodically too so you guys if you've seen my other if you saw the first season you know that cats can be a pain so let's just put three in each one of these I want to show you guys how this works all right all right, that's a good start. Okay, so let me let me walk through this, and then we'll watch it run. So the only difference here is that I have these deployer blocks, and I think Didi Fizzle was the first guy to suggest this. A couple of people have talked about it. I think Didi Fizzle was the first guy to show me, and he had a, an automatic obsidian generator. I don't know if his was this automatic or not. We'll see. Um, but anyway, he has a couple of things that he suggested, so I, I will talk about those as well. But um, he's got some... If you guys haven't checked out his videos, I, I think I favorited a couple of them, or I at least um, I might have retweeted one. I don't know if I did. Oh, no, I was. he had the Technic Pack setup video. Um, go check his stuff out and you know, see what you think. Um, give him feedback. He's just starting, and he could definitely... He could he could use the feedback and the... Uh, but he, he, he knows a lot, and he, he's, doing a, he's doing a lot. 
um, doing a lot of, of helping me as far as giving information. So check out his videos. Anyway, sorry. Um, so these are deployers, right? So those are going to deploy the redstone. These are the block breakers. This is set up exactly as it was over in the other place. Yeah, so I brought... It's funny. I just I realized that I you guys haven't seen this. I haven't really described to you my plans for this. But anyway, um, that's what... that's this is, this is basically the same materials that I had over in the other the other spot, but the new... The new stuff is the block or the block deployers. Okay, so then I used these things, which are the the various logic gates. This is a I don't know, like a switch gate. This is a timer. This right here is a da. What is that? A not gate. I think that's a not gate or a nor gate i don't know anyway the point is that when it it has it has a current until it has um current fed into it so the out the outbound is always on until it's got a current fed into it and so that is obviously used for our pistons because we always want that piston to be on until we want the system to fire so nothing is happening right now these wires are coming in to this switch which this little setup right here is important this will this will set a timer to, to rotate for one tick so basically when this switch flips that starts the timer the timer goes around for however long you have it set for and you can right click on one of these and you can see the time 14 seconds seems to be a good amount of time for the lava to get down and all the way through so you can you can right click and set you can plus or minus the seconds here right so i have it set for 14 seconds when this receives a a current it flips this switch which does two things. One, it, it puts a current to this, right? So for the amount of time that it's flipped over there, it puts a current here, which turns this off, which pulls the piston back, which lets the lava flow, right? And then this will go for 14 seconds. When it gets around, it ticks. When it ticks, it turns this switch off, which puts the piston back on, right? And it sends a tick out this side. It sends a pulse out this side. As soon as it pulses out this side, it fires both our pistons right here, and it fi fires our block breakers down there. Okay? The other thing it does is that same pulse comes down through here, and it starts another one of exactly the same setup, except for this one is only a two-second interval. Right? So it does the same thing. This one receives a pulse. It flips. That starts the timer. As soon as the timer ticks, it sets the switch back and it pulses out here and that pulse fires the block deployers. Okay? So that's two seconds after the block breakers go off. So basically the cycle is this is the state it will always end up in. No lava, lava's cleared, blocks are broken, and there's redstone placed, right? So now there's two things. The 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 kind of the thing that makes all this work, we could just have it to where we push a button every time, right? We just go bam, hit the button. It fires one pulse in here, starts the timer, and the whole system starts to work. And that's fine. You could just sit there and hit the button every time and just wait till it was done, right? But what we really want it to do is while we have a switch flipped, we want it to just keep going so that we could just start it and it would just make obsidian for 15 minutes or whatever. And the way that we do that is we use this, which is a, I think this is the AND gate. I can't remember all the names. So basically this is a gate that says if all of the inputs are true, so if all of them are on, then fire the output. And you can actually turn these off. So you can see if I right click, we're gonna turn that one off. We don't use it. We can turn the middle one off. We can turn this one off, or we can turn just the right one off. So you can turn them all off independently. I want them all on for right now because what's gonna happen is you can see that these, that these inputs, really this is the same input. This is the input from the pulse that fires the deployers, right? And what we want is for the whole process to start back over as soon as the deployers have fired. And the way that we do that is we make sure that this, well, we want it to start back over as soon as the deployers have fired if we want it to start back over at all. And if we don't, then we want it to just stop. And what we're doing here is we're basically saying that if the deployers fire, which pulses both of these, I just was too lazy to make this so they didn't both go in, but we just we really only need one of them. We could just turn this side off and only have that one. But this thing is going to say, if all of these inputs are on, then fire this pulse. Well, if the switch isn't on, this goes to the switch that's out there. If the switch isn't on, it's going to fire these pulses, and it's, or it's going gonna, it's gonna to put the inputs um, hot, and it's not going to fire this pulse, which would start the whole process over. If the switch is on, then it's going to fire the pulse because all of the inputs will be true. So I'm going to show you guys this the way this works, okay? So first, we are going to... I'm just going to hit it once and let it run with just um, 
let it run with just one cycle. So I can push this button and it'll run every time I push the button. So I'm gonna hit the button, bam, it fires this, flips that switch over, starts the timer, this is off, so all of the lava is flowing, right? So it's still flowing. And I'm actually gonna stand here so you guys can see what it actually does. So one more, well, that happens frequently. I don't know if it happens to you guys, but it um, sometimes it only goes two blocks down. So that happens probably one out of every five times. But anyway, you see that it, it broke the blocks, it cleared the lava, um, and it replaced this, right? And the system is not running anymore. Everything has stopped, okay? So now what we're gonna do is this time, instead of watching this, we'll watch the actual circuits run. So I'm gonna flip the switch. That's not gonna do anything except for put this hot, right? So now when this pulse fires, we're gonna get a pulse to keep going. It'll basically start the whole process over. So now when I hit the button, so and, and I guess I should have said this, the button is a bypass. The reason the button works is it doesn't have to worry about this gate. It just bypasses, it goes straight into this line, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this, bam. It started it. The timer's going for 14 seconds. The lava's flowing, right? It's going to make it all the way down. When this pulses, it's going to do two things. It's going to fire this tick here. So tick, just fired those off, started that timer, and it went two seconds, and now it's back, right? So now the whole system has reset, and it started over again because this was true. So we'll watch this this time. Okay? So tick. Bam, fires. When this comes back through, it's going to be really quick. It probably already did it. Yeah, it's, it already did it. We didn't even see it. That thing happened so quickly. Let me see if we can watch it this time. Yeah, you can't. it happens so fast you can't even see it. So anyway, but it's still going. So we got to go turn this off because I think we're out of redstone. So now... Yeah, we're out of redstone. We've just hosed the whole thing. But that's all right. It's going to break those. We'll just have to break that one block. There we go. So anyway, it stopped the system, right? So now it's not going anymore. So as long as I keep redstone in there, this will keep working basically forever. Right? And that is very cool. So let's see. So we got our our 10 pieces of obsidian out of that. I mean, we, you know, we haven't been at it for very long. 10 pieces is pretty good. Um, I could, I could get, if I could get that thing filled with a stack 64 each, right? I would make a couple hundred obsidian and I could turn that into a ton of diamonds and I could do it while I was doing other work, just hanging out. Right. So, so that's really cool. Um, this this took me a little while to figure out, not because I, I, I mean, I understand the logic gates. A lot of it was just like, I built the thing before I realized that I wanted to turn it into an automated system, so I didn't really plan for an automated system. Um, some things that would make this easier. Um, we could use, let's see, I think they have the bundled wire. So, yeah, so there's these bundled wires, right? So orange bundled cable, mag magenta, and then there's like bundled cable, which is all of them together. So th basically the, what this does is allows you to um, to have cables run side by side. I think, I haven't actually looked at this, it's funny. Um, these allow you to, to run cables side by side. I, I don't know if there's like, let's see, the alloy wires. Yeah, because you take red alloy wire and then you just turn that into a bunch of the different bundled, bundled wires, I think. Um, anyway, the point is that there is a way that you can run wires together um, and they won't, step on each other so you can run wires within the same block so you could get away from a lot of this and like if you run them oh if you run a blue wire over an orange wire um uh, uh, perpendicular to each other then they won't actually join up right so you don't have to worry about all this craziness that you have to do to make sure that things are far enough away and this this is a huge just the regular red al alloy wire is a huge improvement over the original redstone stuff but this is still it takes a lot of space i mean this would imagine doing this without the logic gates and without um, the redstone wire that can run on the walls and stuff like that this would take you would have to have I don't even know if you could do it, frankly, because all of this stuff is so close together. I mean, you would have to have, if you could manage to figure it out, you'd have to have a huge area to do it in. So even though this is a pretty big area, it's, it's pretty reasonable compared to what we normally have to deal with. So anyway, let me think about this for a second. A couple of things I wanted to do. So I, I really dig this setup. Um, I'm going to have to start quarrying. What I was going to do is basically I was going to dig back through here and set my quarry up. Um, I was going to just use the... Uh, 
use the destruction catalyst, go back this way a little ways, clear out one spot for um, for the quarry to start. I'll probably go down a, a hair or two, maybe go down one or two blocks, and then clear out a place for the quarry to start, and then just start clearing out big rooms and, and setting up quarries underground. I, I just don't know if I like that. I don't want to be you know, like creating a giant caverns underneath my complex. So I don't know what to do about quarrying. It's just, I'm not happy with, for some reason, the last time we had that big swamp and I was totally willing to just quarry the whole swamp away. Um, I don't know what to do right now because that swamp was close enough that it would always run. And Anyway, I, I don't know. I got to think about it. Okay, so I, I have, I hate to even look to see how long this video is, but I guess you guys like the long videos. So one more thing I wanted to do um, a couple of things you'll notice. One thing, I, one thing I use all the time is this diamond handsaw, and you can see it's about halfway dead. Um, I got this screwdriver. I don't know if they make an electric screwdriver. They should, but it's about halfway dead. The screwdriver I should mention um, is what you use to work on these various logic gates. Um, you can place one down, and then it will. Uh, you can you can place a logic gate down, and it will. Uh, you can you can switch the sides. You can basically s just turn the logic gate around. Um, let me show you this too. This is important. What what doesn't happen is let's see. Let's say a repeater. If I go over here and I highlight the repeater, and even if I go like that, I can see how to build it. You have to use these stone wafers, which you basically just take stone and smelt down to make stone wafers, and then you have you know cathodes and all this junk, right? Um, I can do that, but I don't get the description over here. But if I have it in my inventory, I get the description over here. So you can see that a pulse former, it says it emits a short pulse when an input turns on. Uh, the pulse is sent instantaneously, which also makes it useful for a fast repeater. Uh, and because the pulse is so short, placing two back-to-back -back allows pulses to be sent in both directions. So um, it, it gives you a really good explanation of what it is, like a multiplexer. The center input selects which side um, input controls the output. So you'd have to some of it you'd have to see a counter is pretty um, obvious the counter is cool every time it takes a ticket it, it counts until it hits the amount that it that it's set for and then it sends a pulse so you can use that i mean you can make some really complex stuff sequencer anyway the point is that it shows you over here this the crafting table too shows you the description it's very nice um it doesn't do that for things that are over here in the uh in this too many items or not enough items thing so anyway that's one thing to think about see the stinking cat <laughs> I don't know what to do about him. He's always just attacking me. Alright, well, I guess I'm just going to let him attack me for a minute. So, man, the, seriously, cat? You know what? Let's do this. Maybe he needs some food. There we go. He's fine now. He just decided to leave me alone. Okay, so let me show you. The other, uh, totally, totally sidetracked. What I was going to say is my screwdriver and my saw and all that stuff is uh, is getting damaged. That's why I like having the nano saber and the diamond drill. I can just recharge them. I never have to do anything about that. Um, so what we want is we want a repair. What is it? Like talisman of repair. And to do that, we need paper, string, and these covalence dust. I think I have the covalence dust, so let's take a look. I, I could be wrong. Let's see if I... I need some string. I think I have some paper, too. I get I get a lot of stuff mixed up. I don't know if I actually made covalence dust, but I thought I had to to make some of the stuff that we used. So I could be wrong, and if I am, we'll, I'll go make some. I need a piece of paper. Covalence dust. It could be that I didn't make any. If I didn't, I will pause and go make some because I wanted to sh show you guys this. You've seen it. Oh, there we go. One, two, three. Now, what I don't know <laughs> is... There it is. Talisman of repair. Okay. So the idea is that you throw it in a chest with something that you want to repair, right? What I don't know is if it has to be an alchemy chest. It might have to be an alchemy chest. Oh. It's actually repaired stuff in my inventory. It repaired that stone pickaxe. Is it actively repairing other stuff? Didn't it? That stone pickaxe was, was almost dead. I'm just watching here. I'm trying to see if it's actually repairing stuff as it's in my inventory. It might be that it even works in your inventory. Which would be super cool. Let's try this. I know it works... Well, I don't know if it works in here. 
Maybe it doesn't work while you're staring at it. <laughs> and maybe it does work in the alchemy bag. In fact, well, I'd like to know if it works in here. So let's come back to that in a second. Um, let's see. So I moved. Yeah. So so let me, <laughs> let me talk about this since I, I didn't do it yet. I moved uh, all my stuff over from the other little place that we were set up. Um, I've got the uh, MFE here, and I'm going to turn this into an MFSU. This thing is pretty much always full. I don't use it that much right now. Um, and it, it, it works fine, but I want to make it a, an MFE or yeah, an MFSU. And once I do that, um, we can start trying to make some UU matter. And then we'll, I, I really, I mean, the things I want to get quantum armor, um, I got to start making some dark matter and get that whole process going. I just need to get to that point where I can start doing some of the basic stuff that we were doing before, like, um, you know, get, ha have some sweet armor and stuff, but also getting, you know, getting to the point where we have whatever materials we need right now. I mean, I didn't think it was going to be the case, but right now my biggest problem is resources, uh, even though, you know, we have all these cool ways to get stuff. Um, it just feels like I'm, I'm not quite as organized as I was before. So, uh, anyway, this, this is coming from that, um, that tree, the, uh, solar tree. I'm going to replace it with the MFSU and then it will come from a, from a, uh, a reactor someday i'm not sure when and then this is just obviously a low voltage converter we'll put a high voltage or a medium voltage converter for whatever we need and a and and run straight out of it onto the high voltage i do like having the cat just kind of laying around that's cool um we'll have the high voltage for for the uh the matter generator thing all right let's see what else so yeah so this you, you've seen this setup before this is just my my basic machines and i've got you know whatever I decided I wanted to smelt. So let me think about this. Let me look at... Okay, so somebody wants me to wear a bunny and ride um, a horse. I should probably do that since this has been the most serious and lame video yet. I did a lot of talking about logic gates. That's got to turn people off. So I talked about the pickaxe turning the names on and off for horses. Um, uh, DD Fizzle also has a, an MK2 um, and three energy... There's three different energy collectors. So you can... Oh, it's MK2 and three. So there's... Yeah, so those energy collectors over there also are, let's see, there's the Mark II and the Mark III energy collector, and there's the Mark II and the Mark III relays, which I don't, I have also not built the relays. Those are things I need to look into. And there's also, what was it, the uh, something star. What is this thing called? Yeah, the Klein star. So that's also, I don't, I don't know if that's like a piece of fuel or what that is, but anyway, that's, uh, Fizzle was telling me about that, and I'm not exactly sure. Um, let's see, sorry. Uh, oh, uh, dev, R, uh, it's, what is it? Dev, dev E, so it's D-E-V-E-R-Z network. Devs, devers, net, devers network, developers network, devers network. Maybe that's what it is. Um, said that a block, uh, you can use a red power block breaker and deconstruct an ob obelisk. Um, and it, it'll probably lose the block breaker. I think it maybe blows it up, but it'll suck the obelisk obelisk piece out the back and spit it out so that's something i might actually try um i thought that was interesting because i do want to reconstruct that obelisk that's close to our house just for fun um or reconstruct that obelisk altar thing um somebody chump 4000 wants me to name my next horse chump i will name a horse chump um cool beans one two three if i um wants me to name my next cat cool beans so um i have to name the next cat Bucky, but I will name the one after that, Cool Beans. Um, and then Organization 13, who always has given me great feedback and has just a lot of funny things to say, but also has a lot of helpful things to say. Um, it's going to be his, his birthday, um, Friday, March 9th, so I'm going to give him a shout out for happy birthday in case I don't remember to do something then, but I have it on my list to actually try to do something, so I'll put something in the video or something. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Maybe bake a cake. I've never baked a cake in Minecraft. Um, and then he also said, and I'm going to tell you here because it's funny, um, and I'm not going to get to it, but he wants, uh, when I'm in, when I'm in, stinking cat, when I'm in, uh, the Spellbound Caves, he wants me to, to, uh, to, whenever I use the sign to say, read more, <laughs> but spelled M-O-A-R, so I thought that was hilarious. Um, that's Organization 13, who's very helpful. So let's take a look at, where did I put that thing? Down here somewhere? Totally not working. It seems like it worked on that stone pickaxe, though. Let's see. Do you have to put, like, stuff next to it or something? Or does it use... Maybe it uses power? I guess I'm going to have to look into this, too. Let's see. Does it tell me on here? 
Having this item will cause it to consume covalence dust to repair items nearing destruction. However, if you put it in an alchemical chest, it will repair our items for free at the rate of one point per second. Okay, so you can actually... It's probably sucking up covalence dust as we speak. Repairing these things, because I... I'm assuming, I don't know. I don't know how that works. But if we put it in an alchemical chest, it will repair it for free. The question is, if we put it in an alchemical bag, is that also true? You would think that that would be similar, because they do... They do work together. Um, let's see, what does it take to build an alchemical chest? Anyway, you guys get the idea. It will repair that stuff, and that's what I want. Um... A chest, I think I need a diamond, which I'm so short on. Oh, I could totally make a chest. Let's make a chest. We need at least one anyway. So I think I have one diamond I could use. Oh, I only have one diamond. Do I only have one diamond left? Could that be pot? Oh, maybe I have one in here. Oh, I have two in here. All right, let's use one diamond. Let's make an alchemical chest. That would be worth it for today. Um, so we need... Oh, man. I need wood. <laughs> this is... This is the way this has been going. This is going to be the possibly the longest video yet. Oh, so I didn't even mention these. So this is the project table. So a couple things. Project table, and you'll notice that if I... Maybe I did already talk about these. If I uh, click off of it, it doesn't just dump the stuff out, right? I can actually leave the stuff in there, and then you can put stuff down here. Now, somebody mentioned that if... like I don't know how this works, but if you put something down there... I don't know how this works. I, I think you're supposed to be able to create projects and then as long as you have the things that you need for that project in here, you can you can use a template and make them. I don't know how this works. I have not spent any time messing with it. Um, this is the, this is the, uh, I can't remember. This is a different one. This is like the build table or the architect table or something like that. It's a different one. And I'm not sure exactly what, what it does either, but I just got these because they're cool looking for now. <laughs> I didn't actually do anything with them yet, but um, I'm going to try to get all of the different tables and workbenches. I'm going to make a big workbench area here, so I'm not loving the way it looks down here yet, but okay, so let's uh, try not to get too sidetracked. Chest. I've got some iron. I've got a diamond. What am I missing for that? Oh, stone, of course. I've got no stone. Well, you know what? I have stone somewhere. Uh, there's some stone. Alright, let's mm, do that and that. And there we go. Alchemical chest. So let's take that and we'll put it over here for now. Can I put it right next to it? I think I can. That's cool. Cool looking chest. Actually, what I should do is put it down there. Let's go put it over here. Nice. There we go. And then... What did I do with that stuff? I shoved it in that bag, didn't I? So now, that'll basically just be our repair chest. Oh, but I already repaired that stuff. Well, I repaired that, and that's mostly repaired. So it does work. That's interesting. It does work in the, uh, the alchemical bag as well, which is good to know. I could just take stuff with me. But it's also cool to have an alchemical chest laying around, because they look cool. So anyway, you guys have been extremely patient. I appreciate it. Cat's uh, using the restroom. That's a good way for us to leave it. Um, yeah, I'm I'm slowly but surely making progress here. Um, I know there's a lot of people things people want to see. I watched a video for the Fraps um, mod, which I thought was actually very cool. Um, it's got like tanks. You can have a tank, which is awesome. So we need a tank. It's also got airplanes and whatnot. Um, there's just a lot going on. So I, I'll try to get my act together and be a little more organized next time, but I wanted to get caught up on all this stuff so i appreciate you watching um thumbs up if you enjoyed it tell your friends check me out on twitter minecraft otb to follow uh, minecraft on the block on facebook and minecraft on the block.blogspot.com i'll talk to you guys later bye